Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Let's all gather together and give some praise and worship to God. When night has fallen and fear is calming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up. Cause you won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. season you keep repeating your promises to me oh now there's no stopping what you have started until it is complete when my mind says i'm not good enough god you're enough for me i've decided worship you Jesus let's continue to worship the Lord in a place of victory because the battle is the Lord's the victory is ours when it looks like I'm surrounded by the enemy and it feels like hope is far beyond my reach I know the battle, I know the battle, I know the battle, the battle is yours, it's always yours. I know the battle, I know the battle, I know the battle, the battle is yours, it's always yours. Let's sing together. When the seas agree that they should rage against me, and the storm it pours its wrath upon my head, and there's a name that should. Jesus. 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Cause your name is power, your name is healing, your name is love. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak. in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets Jesus in so Sing Jesus, shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus.
Jesus. We cry out the name Jesus. We declare the name Jesus. The Bible says the name of Jesus is a strong tower and those who run into it shall be safe. Those who run to it shall be saved, safe and saved. So Jesus, we cry out to you. We call out your name. Even when we don't know what to say or pray for our family, for our marriages, for our relationships, when we're left at, when we're empty for words, thank you that we can just speak your name, Jesus, because it's all powerful, all knowing, and your name brings healing. Your, bra your, your name brings victory. Your name brings peace and comfort. Your name is all powerful. And so we thank you, God. We thank you that you are the God who reconciles. You're the God who forgives. You're the God who extends your love to us. And so today we declare Jesus over our marriages, our families, those of us who are suffering from depression and anxiety, those, who are, those of us who are struggling with addictions of any, whatever sort of addiction. Lord, we cry out Jesus. We pray for deliverance, redemption in the name of Jesus, that those things will take place because when they speak the name of Jesus, shackles will be broken down, strongholds will be broken down. So we declare the name of Jesus that today. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we magnify you. You're all powerful, all knowing again, Lord. We just love you so much. Thank you for the freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all of God's people said together, amen and amen. Thank you, God. Just want to keep singing about Jesus. I don't know about you. Thank you for joining us today here at New Hope Windward. It's so wonderful to see brothers and sisters and friends and families come together and gather and celebrate the Lord and be encouraged. So be encouraged today as you hear the message and be blessed abundantly. For those of you joining us here in person in every theater, for those of you joining us online, have a wonderful day and enjoy the message. Thank you. Independence has never been easy. Nearly 250 years ago, it was something worth fighting for. The idea of a people who stood on equal footing, free to speak, free to wander, free to live. These were ideals worth risking everything for. Today, we find ourselves fighting old battles, not with past foes, but with ourselves. We are a nation divided, divided by skin, divided by opinion, divided by hate. It seems the very freedoms we once fought for have become stumbling blocks. Are we too busy seeking ourselves to even recognize the tragedy which surrounds us? Do we no longer see the profound need for the hand of God? In this moment, the truth of scripture rings especially true. If we, the people, will humbly pray, turn from wickedness and seek his face, then he will hear us, he will forgive us, and he will heal this land. Today, may we remember this one simple truth. True independence is found only in our dependence on God. Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan and I'd like to welcome you to New Hope Winward. Thank you guys for joining us today. We're so glad that you're here. 
In a few moments, we're going to hear a great message. But before we do, we're going to worship God through our giving. As many of you know, my wife and I have two beautiful kids whom we simply adore. I love spending time with my son, Liam. He loves to play in the pool and it's fun to watch him play with his aquatic creatures and sharks. His younger sister, Haley, is absolutely precious. She's eight months old and can't really say much yet, but her smile is infectious and totally warms my heart as a dad. After all, she is daddy's girl. Now imagine me sharing with you how much I love my kids yet neglect to feed them when they're hungry, barely spend time with them, and ignore them when they cry or get hurt. You'd probably question what kind of a dad I really am, and if I truly mean it when I say I love my kids, right? In fact, you'd probably think I was a hypocrite. Well, good news is I do all those things and a whole lot more because I truly do love my kids. Well, in the New Testament, the Apostle James said something similar about our faith as Christ followers. He said that true, genuine faith in Christ is reflected in our lives by doing good to others on a regular basis. In fact, he goes so far as to say that if you see someone in need, but don't give them anything to meet that need, such as food or clothing, then your faith is pretty much worthless. Faith without good deeds is as good as dead. Now, how's that for blunt? He emphasizes his point by saying in James chapter two, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Many of you actively live out your faith in Christ by serving at church, helping the hurting and less fortunate, and through your giving as New Hope Winter continues to support our many partner ministries locally and around the world to reach and transform lives by the power of Christ. As God's people, your everyday actions mirror His heart for others in practical and tangible ways. And that's the kind of genuine faith that James refers to, a life-giving kind of faith. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see three easy, safe, and secure ways to donate. Or you can scan the QR code. Also, by clicking the button on the upper right-hand corner of your screen, it'll take you to our website, where you can give a one-time gift or have it reoccurring. Would you bow your heads with me as I lead us in prayer? Lord Jesus, we love you with all of our hearts, and we want that love to be reflected in our words, attitudes, and actions. Your word says that when we share your love with others by tangibly doing things to help and make a difference in their lives, that's when our faith is real and comes to life. So as an active expression of our faith in you, we want to give to help those who need your hope and healing. It is in your name we pray, amen. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, we're so excited that you're here. We have a special welcome gift for you. It's a New Hope Winterhead stainless steel tumbler. Simply stop by guest services in the lobby after service to pick one up. Or you can text the word NEW to 808-736-3777 and we'll mail you a tumbler as our way of saying welcome to New Hope. We'd love to stay connected with you this week. The easiest way to do that is by following us on Facebook or Instagram or simply use the QR code on the screen. Last year, New Hope Winner partnered with Make Lo one of 22 ministries and organizations we financially support and distributed tons of school supplies and backpacks to 500 keiki in need at several Windward Elementary schools. Parents expressed immense gratitude for blessing their children, and it was all due to your incredible generosity, New Hope Windward. Well, this year, we want to partner again with Makelo'o to bless keiki in need with backpacks filled with school supplies for the new school year, and we need your help. Would you join us by making a financial donation so that we can purchase enough school supplies? Fisher Hawaii will join in by allowing us to purchase all school supplies at wholesale prices to stretch every dollar donated. To make a donation, simply scan the QR code or go to our website and select School Supplies Drive when making your donation. We're also looking for lots of volunteers to help pack school supplies on Saturday, July 16th as well as distribute them to Keiki in Need on Saturday, July 23rd, before the school year kicks off. Stop by guest services to sign up or text Test Drive to 808-736-3777. And parents, if you'd like to instill within your own children the value of serving others, feel free to bring your kids eight years or older. Together, let's be Jesus's hands and feet to serve hundreds of disadvantaged Keiki who need our help. Would you like to make a difference for Jesus in the community but haven't really had an opportunity due to the pandemic. Over the past two years, Special Olympics Hawaii suspended all of their activities due to COVID. But coming up on July 30th, they'll be holding their very first event in two years. 
Special Olympics will be holding a bocce ball event at Waiau District Park from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. They're looking for volunteers. No experience is necessary, just willing hearts to help support their event. To sign up, either stop by guest services or scan the QR code. Just be sure to select New Hope Winnard as your organization and someone will be in touch with you with more details. And lunch will be provided. Well, that's all the announcements we have for you. Well, today we have a great message, so would you give a warm welcome to Pastor Dave. Aloha everybody, welcome to New Hope Winward. I wanted to say a big hello to all of you at our different New Hope Winward locations. It is super great to have all of you here at Regal Cinemas. I want to say hi to all of you at Ann Pearl. A big aloha to all of you at the Plaza. And of course, a huge mahalo and aloha to all of the amazing men and women at the Correctional Centers. We're so glad that you all are joining us. And I just pray that God blesses you. I love you all. And I'm so grateful that you're here today to grow closer to God with us. Well, we've had a few guest speakers come over the last few weeks speaking this summer. If you missed any of their messages, be sure to check them out on YouTube on our website. There's some great messages. And today we have one of Connie O'Hay's finest pastors sharing the message, me. I'm just kidding. We have Pastor Rob McWilliams, who is a pastor in Connie O'Hay, and he's sharing the message today. And Rob is the lead pastor of Anchor Church here in Connie O'Hay, and uh, this church has blessed New Hope Windward big time. How? Well, they've allowed us to use their facilities over and over and over. They've allowed us to have worship and prayer nights at their campus, baptisms, Christmas services, and so much more. And honestly, they've been the most generous church to us that I know of. And it's, it's just because Pastor Rob and his team, they have this heart to help all churches reach and disciple more for Christ. So I'm just so grateful to have his support and have him here today. Let me tell you a little bit about Rob. He and his wife, Deb, they've been pastoring at Anchor Church for over 30 years. How's that? That's so amazing, and we're just super honored to have him share the message. So, New Hope, would you join me in giving a big, warm, and appreciative welcome to our friend, Pastor Rob McWilliams. Also, I want to look in the camera and welcome everybody that's joining us online and in the other theaters. It's so great to be with you. By the way, just real Christians sit in the front row. Well done. You know, I, I've been a long time since I've been in a movie theater, actually. But I have been in this theater and fell asleep. So hey, if you're watching us online right now, just picture this. This is, one, of course, a new theater, relatively new, leather seats that recline. So I'm going to wake them up for sure. i got to stay. My energy's got to stay up today because I don't want anybody falling asleep in any of these theaters. So good to be with you guys. In fact, Dave and I have a couple passions that we share together. First and foremost, golf. We love to golf, and I love golfing with him. He is literally the best trash talker there is on a golf course, hands down. Funny, witty, and man, it is. I, mean, I can't tell you how fun it is. Wait, he is literally crazy on the golf course. I don't know if you know that. I mean, he's calm, cool, and collected here on the stage, leading this amazing church. But on the golf course, oh, the real Dave shows up. Real Dave. If you ever have a chance to golf with him, say yes. Also, we have another passion that we share, and I bet you do too, like our church at Anchor. This New Hope family loves our community. We are passionate about the Windward side. Our desire, my desire, and I hope your desire is, now, of course, knowledging not everybody watching online or here lives on the Windward side, but we all have a passion for the world we live in. In fact, in Matthew 5, in verse 14, it says that we are the light of the world. In fact, it's really, here's how I say it. You're the light of your world. The word says, like a city on a hill that can't be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. No, no. They light it and put it on a stand so it shines everywhere. In the same way, the scripture says, let your good deeds shine for all to see that so your heavenly Father would be glorified. New Hope Windward and the Anchor family and other great churches, First Pres, all the great churches on the Windward side, and there are amazing pastors and churches. And I want, I want to encourage us all to own our world. Like when you come over the Leaky Leaky, the H3 or the Poly Highway and drive into our communities, people would literally feel the atmosphere, atmosphere on the Windward side was just different because you, the Holy Spirit, showed up with his love so that we 
We shine in our communities, our neighborhoods, our just hanging out at Long's or the mall, wherever we are with our families, that God's love would pour through us and people would know it. Do I get a good amen? amen? It's a passion of mine. I know it's a passion of Dave's. So, ready to get in the Word? Okay, let's get in the Word today. I've entitled my message, Know the Password. Now, I read a story recently that said, a lot of people have up to 100 passwords. Like, of course, we have to you know, use a password to enter, get on our email, websites, our financials, even get on our phone. We need to put in a password so that we can access that. But 100, just think that, 100 passwords? I don't have the brain capacity for 100 passwords. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm like the most popular password at least one of the top three of all time. You know what it is? Password. That, by the way, if you want to access most of my stuff, it's password with a zero instead of an O. Come, how, many, how many use that as well? I know you do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever it takes. We all use, we use simple, simple passwords so that we won't forget them. Isn't it great, though, great, that they underneath Forgot your password? Of course I did. Tell me what it is. Anybody ever done that? For the, for the you know, just quickly I'll tell you a story. I, I, I put together a Zoom meeting. By the way, I am not a Zoom meeting guy anymore. That's over for me. Tons of Zoom meetings in my past couple years. I forgot my password one time. I, I had brought these different pastors together to give me some coaching because I had taken over Anchor Church. And that some of them were on the mainland in two different time zones, and then some of them here in, on Oahu. And I had, uh, had this meeting at this certain time, so all of, and then all of a sudden I got on a phone call. And I lost myself in the phone call, and I, at the last second I realized, oh my gosh, i got to get my Zoom meeting. And I literally started typing in it, and I totally forgot my password. The pressure, the stress of the moment literally went blank. And out of the blue, out of the blue, God gave me that password, and I got on that Zoom meeting. Anybody with me? Ever forgot your password at the wrong time? Did you know that God had a password? He does. He has a password. In Psalm 100, verse 4, in the message version, it says this. Enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourself at home, take, talking praise, thanking him, and worshiping him. Here's what I want you to see in the scripture, an amazing scripture. To enter into his presence, God says, come with a humble heart and a, and a, and a heart of praise and gratitude and thank you. I love this verse here. It says, make yourself at home. What he's saying is that when you come into his presence, he wants you to feel incredibly safe, incredibly at peace in his place. And it's the most precious place you can ever be. Like if you come to my house, so if I have, I have some friends, Deb and I have some friends from the mainland coming over here on Tuesday, I want them to feel at home in my place. Don't you when you have guests coming over? Like, like I say this, you have refrigerator rights. Absolutely refrigerator rights. Like anything that's mine is yours. Make yourself at home. And that's what... God's telling us in this verse, when we come into his presence, he says, make your home, like be together, like sit together, let's, let's watch TV together, let's be in, a, in, in, our, in, his, in his place, intimately involved in what he's doing, and because he's intimately involved in what we're doing. Do I get amen? amen? And then to praise him. When we come with a heart of gratitude and praise, it opens up the, the windows of heaven into our life. In the, in the Hebrew and Greek, for the word presence, is the word we use in English, face. Think that through with me. God's saying he wants to be face to face with us. Like it denotes an intimacy, a closeness, a bond, if you will. That when we come into his presence, we, he wants us to make sure that we know it's the safest place in the universe to be. Amen? Sometimes in life, though, we're going through life so quickly, some of the issues and stresses and strains of life, and all of a sudden we realize we haven't taken the time to even be thinking about being in his presence. And God says, when you say thank you, when you come with a grateful heart, when you come with a heart of praise, you will experience my presence. 
your amazing worship band who brought us into worship this morning. When we're into worship, when we lose ourselves in the words of the song, we literally, God's saying, you're going to be in his presence. And when we worship God, I don't know about you, but when I worship God and really understand who I'm addressing and who I'm worshiping, I can't help but get on my knees and thank him. In a, in a New Living Translation, the version you use here and the one we use at Anchor, it says this, Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Same thought. When we come into his presence, when we come into his courts, here's the thing. Make sure that we remember the password is thank you. I lo- there's a couple of psalms that are, I go to regularly to give me encouragement, to really lean into. Those, these, those are certain scriptures that we all have that when we've read them over time or, and still read them today, God speaks to us through these scriptures. And in Psalm 139, one of my favorite psalms in the Bible, it's, a, it's one that David wrote. He says this about, he's trying to convey to his readers, to here's how David, King David saw the presence of God when he wrote this. In, excuse me, in Psalm 139, it says this, you go before me and you follow me. Think that through. David said, I'm acknowledging, and he wants us to acknowledge that in our life, he goes before us, he goes behind us, he's completely around us wherever we go. It says, you place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never expect, escape from your spirit. Do you, do you know that? His spirit is in us, guiding us, comforting us, correcting us, making sure, making sure that our relationship is tight. And it ends like this. It says this, you can never, I can never get away from your presence. Again, the most powerful place we can ever be is in the presence of God. Let me read another one. It's not going to be on your screen, but it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. One you might be familiar with, familiar with. Psalms 91. It says this, those who live in the shelter of the Most High, those who live in the covering, those who live in the presence of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I mean, I just love that. It is such a comfort to understand where he, that the Lord wants us to be literally tight. It says this, this I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust in him. He will rescue from every trap and protect you from every deadly disease. He will shelter you with his wings, his faithful promises. This is an amazing verse. If you understand the promises of God in this Bible, it says the promises of God are an armor of your protection. His faithful promises are an armor of your protection. His promises are true. And we can live our lives on his promises. And in this word, it says he promises to never leave us or forsake us. His promises are saying, I am with you wherever you go. Let me finish it with saying this. In verse 9, it says, I will make the Lord my refuge. And this is what I'm praying over the, the New Hope family today. I will make the Lord my refuge if you make the most high your shelter, no, conquer, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. Check out this verse. He will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Isn't that comforting? And they will hold you up in their hands so that you won't even hurt your feet on the stone. Is that not powerful? And that is a promise of the king. And with that in mind, it's important that we understand that when we go to him, we have to understand who we're addressing. And when we go to him, it's easy. Because we're going to th- be thankful because of who he is. So important to understand that. Would you use your imaginations with me for a moment? Allow your mind to think through the through this story. Say you grew up in a village, a small village. A village, a village lined with cobblestone walkways and roadways. And you lived there. 
Not everybody knew your name, and you, you did most of your day trying to just make a living, trying to have enough food to eat that day. Then one day, all of a sudden, you heard all this commotion around you, all this commotion. And you went out to the street to understand what was going on, and you saw that the king was coming down the cobblestone walkway with his entourage. And everybody started crowding around, so you had to get on something so you could look over the crowd to see the king come by. And all of a sudden, the king stopped and looked directly at you. And you were so frightened, you just bucked, ducked down so nobody could see. The king couldn't see you anymore. But all of a sudden, everyone in front of you started parting as the king walked right up to you. And he says to you, would you come to the castle of day and come to a banquet I'm throwing in your honor? And you would go, no, no way. You, you see the way I'm dressed? No, I, I am not worthy. I could never do that. No way. And all of a sudden, the king grabbed your hand and says, no, I really want you there. And he led you into the castle, into this incredible banquet room with people around. And you're just staring around going, oh, my gosh, how did I get here? And then all of a sudden, the king with everyone standing around you, the king had put a robe around you and said to you, would you allow me to adopt you as my children, as my child, so that you would always be with me? In the word, in John 15, it says this. You didn't choose me. How many said I found God? No, you didn't. God chose you and appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. As a child of the King, all of us in this broadcast theater, the other theaters, and watching us online right now, you need to know this. First and foremost, you are a child of the King, the Lord of the Lord, the Lord of Lords, and the King of Kings, your creator adopted you as his kid. In my world, as one of my kids, my, we have three children, I will do anything for, for those kids. And what the Lord is saying, and I know you would too for your kids, but God's saying, you can literally use my name. And if you understand the scriptures, as an adopted child of the king, using his name, it gives us power to walk into any situation filled with the Holy Spirit and his name, a name above all names, and pray over anything. And the word says, according to my word, I'm going to do that for you. The power we have as a child of the king should drop us on our knees and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm not worthy, Lord, but thank you. Sometimes in our lives, sometimes we've done things or said things, and you know, we, we let time go by, and we, God, fall, God feels far from us. Sometimes we're driving through life, and we actually let God be in the back seat while we just knuckle, white knuckle the steering wheel, and we have to have so much control of our lives, we don't even let God in. And God's saying, hey, it would, it would be better if I was with you in the front seat. Like, if you let me actually help you drive, like, I could tell you where to make the right turn and left turn, Things are going to work out good. And as a child of the king, with the Holy Spirit in you, you have that ability. Do I get a good amen? amen. As a child of the chosen child of the king, our hearts should always, always be in a thankful mood. And when we pray, when we converse with God, we have to use the word. What is that word? Thank you. Thank you. Something opens up. When we use the word thank you. Because why? Because when we use the word thankful, we understand the place we're at. The privilege it is just to address the Father. It's a, it's a, it's a posture of humility, of gratefulness, knowing, oh my gosh, I don't deserve any of this. Yet God says, I chose you to experience that. Do I good amen? amen. Every day, every day, every day I wake up. In fact, I don't even get out of bed. The very first thing I always say is, thank you, Lord, for this brand new day. Allow me to worship you and serve you today. Show me what my assignment is today. The, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I would submit to you 
that as you start your days, and I'm going to kind of reiterate this as I go through this message today, but always start the day in a posture of humility and thankfulness. Do I get get an amen? Amen. Interestingly enough, in the word, if you understood, if you understand the word, and if you're a student of the word, you already know this, a major theme of the Bible is having a heart of gratitude and thankfulness and humility. It runs from Genesis 1 to the very end of Revelation. All the way through the Bible. Did you know that both Abraham, all, uh, all the major folks in the Bible, Abraham, Moses, Daniel, David, Nehemiah, all the major players, even in the New Testament with John and Paul and Peter, all had a heart. When they, when they addressed such different situations, when they addressed the Father, they always said, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Also, you might not have known this, but Jesus, seven times recorded in the Gospels, When Jesus prayed, he started the prayer with thank you. When he prayed to feed the 5,000, when he turned water into wine, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, when he was at the Last Supper, he said to the Father, Lord, thank, addressing the Father, starting right here, Lord, thank you. I want to give you thanks and praise. And then he brought his request. If he did it, how many think, okay, wait, I'm going to change my paradigm here. I'm going to enter into a conversation with the Father and by saying, what word? Thank you. you. Isn't that a powerful place to be? Let me read a scripture for you. I find it amazing scripture. You might find, believe it too. In Philippians 4, it says this, the Lord is near. The Lord's presence is near. Do not be anxious about anything. How many people, and me included, I'm raising my hand, can find themselves in an anxious or stressful moment in their lives. Like at 3 o'clock in the morning, anybody ever been there? Yeah, we have. Hear me, New Hope family. When God promises something, those promises are sure, and you can count on it. And here's what it says. But, it says, but in every situation, go back one, but in every situation through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, how many want the peace of God? Here's the promise. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amazing. Where does it start? Thanksgiving. A grateful, a grateful heart. Colossians, another great verse. Devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. So the scripture is quite clear about this. Something happens in the spiritual realm when we come humbly with humility into the presence of God with the word, thank you. Thank you. Here's here's my conviction too when we enter into his presence and we have a conversation with him. Always remember who we are addressing. These days, I don't even bust out into prayer until I really take a deep moment, just take a moment of time, and I just realize, wait, I'm about to dress the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, my Heavenly Father. I always get there, and I, and I would encourage you, understand, because when you get there, like, here's, here's my nor- in my past, my normal routine. Lord, I've got, it's early, but I've only got about five minutes, so listen up. Got some things to say to you. So you whip out your, hey, I need this, this, and this. I need to go. Okay, hope you heard all that. I got to go. And God's saying, no, slow down. Because in his presence is only found when we slow down long enough to enjoy the wonder of the moment with the king. Do I get a good amen? amen? Take time, whatever it takes, maybe getting up earlier, Whenever that time fits the rhythm of your life, but you have to take time. It doesn't happen unless you intentionally choose it to walk into the presence of the king. Amen? Amen. That's why, and I know this is a, a passion for Pastor Dave, and I'm trying to start a revolution as well, that we would take this th- crazy thing. The Bible says you got to do it. And we never. I know we read it, but we never do, and that's called a Sabbath. We see it as, yeah, I wish I had time, God. That would, that's a great idea. Hey, you know my schedule? And, and God would say, yeah, I do. 
Yes, I do. I, I'm clearly aware of your schedule. And you're burning out right in front of me. And I want you, and by the way, it's in the top ten list. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. Take a Sabbath. Why? Because God knows he created us that we need to slow down, refresh and renew in his presence and the presence of the people, these precious gifts and relationships that the Lord's put on our life. I say it like this. I believe God's telling us in the word to take a Sabbath. Like, go get an ice cream. Two scoops. Go take an amazing hike. Go play golf. Go surf. Go hang out with a great book. Take an amazing nap. Have a great dinner. If you're married, make love. Enjoy. God's saying us in Sabbath. And the word Sabbath is the word Shabbat in the original language, and it literally means cease working. A friend of mine at Anchor said, hey, yeah, uh, I took a Sabbath on Saturday, Rob. It was so great. I did all my yard work. I love doing yard work. And I said, yep, I'm glad you got your yard work done, but you truly did not take a Sabbath. Why? Because he didn't cease working. And I believe God's saying to really rest is you mean to not have any of the working responsibilities of your life, and you need to slow down and enjoy them. Do I get a good amen? amen. So like I said, you got to choose to trust. Choose to be thankful. Choose to be thankful. If I gave you only one word to describe life, you could only use one to describe life. Think about in your mind right now, wherever you might be, in, in this theater, the rest of the theaters, or on your couch at home. Think with me right now. And put, in a, put a word in your mind. If you had to describe life, what word would you choose? Now, I, I'm sure that you had said faith. Good. Love. Family, all great. I mean, absolutely great. But I believe the right word is this. I believe the right word to describe life is choices. Because, yes, because you choose to follow Jesus. You choose to love your family. You choose to have a great attitude of life. Do you get my point? We choose that. And I believe the word is telling us clearly that we must choose to be thankful. Look at this book, the scripture in Colossians. It says this, And let the peace of God that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. So as members of one body, we are called, called to live in peace and always be thankful. The word let, let the peace, is an active word. It's a, it's a word of intention that we let ourselves, we allow ourselves to choose every day, every day to be thankful. Of course, in our, our relationship with God, that we're thankful for that, but also expanding out from that, that we would have a grateful and thankful heart for the gifts that God put in your life. Do you realize those people in your life? They, you, those weren't accidents. There's no such thing as coincidence. When God made you, he made them for you and vice versa. This is an incredible thing to understand. Now, I agree. Sometimes in life, we sometimes don't get along with those people, and, and those, sometimes those relationships are frayed. But I believe that no matter where we are in those relationships, we need to be ever-present to be thankful for God for putting those people in our lives. Do I get a good amen? amen? I mean, I'm so thankful for my wife, Deb, 100%, and my children, and now my seven grandchildren. I am blessed beyond measure. I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful to be here, to be a friend of Dave's. It's just incredible. But, and and I, and I want to make sure I'm intentionally choosing every day to be thankful for what God's doing in my life. I, I, in, in the 35 years I've been a pastor, many of those times, hours are spent coaching couples in their marriages. Recently, I was talking to a couple that came in and their relationship was definitely, they were on eggshells with one another. They was frayed. They came into my office. She sat on one end of the table. He sat at the complete other end of the table. Like, and I'm thinking, whoa, this is not good. And all of a sudden, I said to him, I said, tell him his name. I said, are you thankful for your wife? There's a bit of a pause, and then he goes, yes, yes, I am. And then I ask her, are you thankful for your husband? Yes, I am. And so I really leaned into that, and I had them do this. I said, between now and the time I see you next week, I want you every day, every morning you wake up, and I want you to be thankful. Like, tell them, initiate talk, uh, choose to verbally talk, tell the person how much 
I'm thankful for you. So the following Thursday, they came into my office. And they were like hand in hand, holding each other's hands, just walked in together, barely got through the door together. They want not be separated. And they sat at the table directly next to each other. Like he pulled the chair in so there was literally no space. And I'm thinking, what in the world happened this week? And he goes, I, I was not thankful for my wife. And I let negative thinking come in. You know how fast negative thinking can come in? The enemy will feed that every time. But I believe this, when we're thankful, when we're thankful for what the Lord's doing in our life, God will do something amazing to it and for us. We can't, we, we, we can't always, we have no control sometimes over our circumstances, but we definitely have a, a, the choice to how we respond to those circumstances. Do I go to get amen? Let me say it like this. We can never fully control our circumstances, but we can fully control what our attitude and how we respond to them. And we respond to them with a grateful heart. It's amazing. Now listen, let's be honest. The enemy is always trying to get us to not think positively, not think, you know, to think negatively, to not, to throw curveballs at us so that we're not thankful. He uses three main tools as I see it. He uses doubt, and fear, and discouragement. Because when we're in those emotions, those thought patterns, we don't become, we're not thankful, and we're not grateful. I mean, doubt, just for the record, everybody in this room and looking online right now and looking on a screen, listen, we're human beings. Doubt's a part of the process. God is not bummed out when we're down. Have you ever been reading the Word in the morning and all of a sudden this crazy doubt comes through your mind as you read the Word? It's, it happens. And God's not, God doesn't have a problem with that. As long as he doesn't, the enemy doesn't allow you to go from doubt to unbelief. Do I get an amen? I mean, one of the closest people to Jesus, one of his closest, his compadres, his, his posse was Thomas. Do you know what Thomas's nickname was? Anybody know? Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas. All of us can deal with that. And fear. Fear is an emotion that God put in us. So a fear alerts us to possible dangers. That's not a bad thing. But when, he, when it goes from alert to owning us, then it's a problem. And God says, do not fear. Don't be anxious. For I'm with you. Do not fear. Why? Because fear takes us away from a humble heart and all of a sudden we grab control of our life and don't let God in at all. Do I get an amen? And discouragement. That's one of the ones the enemy uses all the time. When he uses it, he doesn't, we don't even recognize it's him using it. But when we get discouraged, when, we, when we're offended, when we take offense to something, we can easily get ungrateful. We can easily worry about things that we don't need to worry about. Also, let's not blame the enemy for everything. Sometimes, this is what happens too, when unforgiveness turns into bitterness, that is a showstopper. That is a dream killer. That stops the wonder of God in his tracks. And I would say to you every day, do not allow, like wake up in the morning, Lord, this is a day that you have made. Let me rejoice and be glad in it. And I will not be a, take an offense today. And I will be quick to forgive anything so that it doesn't own me. Amen? Because when we're there, when we're there allowing this unforgiveness to own us, then we stop becoming grateful to God. Listen, I want to land this plane in this message. But I, I believe this to be true. Being thankful and grateful equals a blessed life. A blessed life. People who study this stuff, psychologists, psychiatrists, social scientists, tell us across the board, not even with no reflection on the Bible at all, tell us that those who live in this posture of, genero- of, of gratefulness and of thanksgiving, our body works better. Our organs, our heart, everything, our emotions work in harmony the way God made them to work when we come and we're thankful for what's around us, our family and our jobs. So this week, New Hope family, I want to encourage you, like today, like this holiday, tomorrow, most of us have tomorrow off. Like today, we would make sure that we, the people around us, 
that we would verbalize, I am so thankful for you. Maybe those relationships are strained a little bit, but that doesn't make, make them any less important, any less a gift from God. And the best way to come back to a place of unity is just go thankful, thank them for you. Lord, thank you. And ask them, thank you, tell them, thank you so much for this relationship. You are so important in my life. Like tomorrow, sit down before the day gets going. After you thank God for who he is in your life, hey, just sit down. Maybe, maybe go through your contact list and just, man, I got I to gotta text them up. I got to text them up. I got to thank them. I got to call them. I got to email them. Wherever they might be, start to understand the power, the miraculous dunamis power of a kind word of thank you. And it starts with the password. And what is the password? New Hope family, the password is? Thank you. Thank you. And watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch how the Lord changes the paradigm. Because this is a hurting world. I don't know if you noticed this, but this world is broken. Like broken, broken. Like next level broken. And I believe this. God is calling his family, his kids, to change everything. That we wouldn't be controlled by the word world, but we'd be controlled by by the word. And in the word, it tells us exactly how to change the world. And it starts with a grateful, thankful, humble heart. When we say one last time, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We all say thank you. In fact, all of us say thank you, Lord. Let's do it loud. One, two, three. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are humble. We are humble that you chose us to be your kids. And Lord, I pray that we would serve you, that you would, using your name, Lord, you'd allow us to change our world for you, that we would be a light of our world, Lord, that we would shine so bright, people would literally look at us and see a reflection of you in us, Lord. In Jesus' name, we all said, and I want to pray for anyone, anyone in this room or looking online right now, if you've never come, in in fact, your heart would be saying, oh, I want to know more about this Jesus this guy's been talking about. If that's you, if you're thinking, oh man, I, I, need to, I need to do some business with God. I want you to take, I want to take this time right now and acknowledging this is your moment. It's not for everybody, but there's a few of us that need to make, take some time and make, take, do something in bringing his relationship, God's relationship to you and connecting the dots that might be missing in your life right now. You're feeling empty sometimes and you're going, what is going on? It's Jesus and allowing Jesus into your heart. So I want to pray for you right now. Lord, I pray for everybody that's looking to have a relationship with you, Lord, that you would come into their hearts right now in a powerful, majestic, miraculous way, and you would touch them so deeply that they would tangibly feel your embrace right this moment. Lord, come in, love on them, allow them to get to know you more every day. And here, in Jesus' name, we all said, and here at New Hope, you can text that number right there, right there. And let the team know, I, I pray, I, need, I, wanna, I wanna take my next steps with Jesus. Just text that number on the screen and somebody will reach out to you and change your life with you. Okay, is that a good word? Good it's, it's the 4th of July weekend. 4th of July weekend. I want you guys to have an amazing time. Anybody gonna be at the Kailua fireworks tomorrow with me? And half the community. It's gonna be amazing. I hope you have a peaceful, restful day tomorrow, just soaking in God and those you you put in your life to love. So have a great week. The New Hope family, blessings to everyone. Hey, thank you for watching today. I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. I encourage you to share this video with a friend. And if you're blessed by this message, you can support God's work by clicking the Give button on the right or on our New Hope Winward website. Don't forget, you can join us live every Sunday online or at one of our New Hope Winward locations. And once again, thank you so much for watching. May God bless you.